So a very good morning to all. So this is a very um, interesting um, topic. So um, what we've done is we've tried to make this a little bit light um, in terms of um, you know, the debate. So debates obviously are very spicy and uh, it's always fun to have um, you know, a friend and colleague on the opposite side. So I'm going to say yes to primary prevention of cardiovascular disease with uh, both GLP and SGLT2. And my conflicts of interest uh, for this is only Suresh. I, I mean, I'm not going to, um, you know, n kind of side any company or anything here, but this is um, only against what Suresh has to say. But Suresh is my friend. So why this debate? So we all know that um, the vascular outcome in people with type 2 diabetes w versus without type 2 diabetes basically says that the risk is very high with diabetes. In fact, it's very, very high. So that's why we're worried, whatever form. We also know that heart failure, whether it is preserved or restricted ejection fraction, is also very high. So now we have come to a point where preventive cardiac and you know, renal outcomes are the way forward. So we do have you know, a lot of drugs to use in secondary prevention, but because of the crosstalk between CVD and CKD, we now need to prevent it and actually talk about primary prevention. The best trial actually looking at a multifactorial intervention and actually primary prevention is actually Steno2. Now, intensive therapy, multifactorial therapy with multiple targets in comparison to conventional therapy actually showed a decrease as in primary prevention of cardiovascular disease. But even in this particular trial, despite intensive treatment, there was a residual risk. So there remains a residual risk which has to be addressed and that is why we need to look into other forms of prevention. Steno2 also told us that if you have intensive treatments and you have multiple targets, you actually achieve primary cardiac prevention. So that's an important message which actually this particular trial tells us. So it would actually extrapolate to the fact that if you have agents that act on multiple targets, that is preferred for cardiovascular disease prevention. And with that background, we do now have two very powerful players in cardiovascular disease prevention in type 2 diabetes. And I call them the Avengers team, whether it is SGLT2 inhibitors or GLP-1 receptor agonists. Basically, you do have very powerful agents which actually look into it. Now, how do you go about it? So targeting this common CVD, CKD risk factors with both these agents because of its actions on multiple targets and specifically in relevance to just not improving glycemia, but also in relevance to weight, blood pressure, albuminuria, whether it is in relation to the tubular glomerular feedback or whether it is cardiovascular modulation or whether it is a central gastrointestinal and incretin pathway e effects on effector um, you know, cardiac and vascular tissues, it is very important that these agents are actually good. So if I were to say, with that introduction, which group of drugs are ideal to prevent cardiovascular, di I mean, cardiovascular disease and type 2 diabetes, you do have a very good improvement from a pathophysiological point of view with these two agents. So I'm not sure how Suresh is going to negate this, but if you were to look at independent aspects, now if you take SGLT2 inhibitors and you're looking at blood pressure lowering effects, whether it is nocturnal, whether it is arterial stiffness, whether it is normalization of the circadian rhythm of the blood pressure, or hard endpoint markers, SGLT2 inhibitors actually score over. In fact, a, a recent review actually said, is it that some of the cardioprotective effects of SGLT2 inhibitors are possibly associated with the normalization of the circadian rhythm of blood pressure? And there was some evidence in relation to the SGLT2 inhibition actions on this. There was another interesting aspect looking at SGLT2 inhibitions and actually fat. Now fat, we're worried about visceral fat, and we're also worried about epicardial fat. There, and these, this is a small study, but actually it did show improvement in these particular targets, which are, improve, which are important. So if I were to say, now with looking at these particular aspects, are SGLT2 inhibitors suited for primary prevention? Well, I would definitely say yes. It actually does have an important effect. If you were to look at RCTs, randomized controlled trials with SGLT2 inhibitors, we have four, I mean, important players like CANA, DAPA and EMPA. Now, for this particular debate, you're looking at primary prevention. So you can't use EMPA-REG because that's a secondary, preven secondary prevention trial. So you have to look at two particular important trials. You need majority with primary prevention. And if you look at majority, the declared TIMI had 60% in the primary CVD arm or with actually risk factors and not secondary prevention. And Credence had a 50-50. So realistically, you have to look at this. Canvas had only a 35% primary prevention. So it just you could glean some idea about primary prevention, but not entirely from it. So if you look at that in totality, and if you were to summarize looking at 
cardiovascular outcomes, specifically in relevance to a composite of heart failure and cardiovascular death in people with atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease or with multiple risk factors, you can see clearly that where SGLT2 inhibitors stand, that basically they are much favorable. Now, also with relevance to background history of heart failure or not, again, you can see that you do have an improvement with SGLT2 inhibitors in primary prevention. So the data is very strong here. I would like to point out to one particular interesting RCT called the Credence, which was basically canagliflozin and renal outcomes in type 2 diabetes and nephropathy. Now, this addressed addition of canagliflozin to type 2 diabetes in people with macroalbuminuria, and they looked at cardiac and renal outcomes. Now, what did it show? If you were to split it into primary and secondary prevention, you can see again whether it was primary or secondary, whether it was cardiovascular death, a composite, MI, stroke, all were much better with the SGLT2 inhibitor arm. And remember, this was 50% primary prevention. So 50% were, were actually secondary and 50% were primary. If we look at the renal outcomes also, the primary composite outcome, or whether it was end-stage kidney disease or requiring dialysis, doubling of serum creatinine, this was much better in, in the arm which was using the SGLT2 inhibitors. So this is RCT evidence. A much recent trial, a post-hoc analysis, came out in the ADA just um, uh, recently, just a few weeks ago. And this was looking at dapagliflozin and actually looked at both cardiac and renal outcomes as a post-hoc analysis. Now, if you look at a composite of cardiorenal outcome, the usage of dapagliflozin, remember, this trial had 60% primary cardiovascular disease subjects. So this is very relevant to the talk. And basically it says that this actually has a good outcome. If you look at renal outcome, as I started, CVD and CKD cannot be separated. They are a continuum. So if you're going to prevent both, you're actually going to have a primary prevention of CVD. And again here, the renal outcomes were much better. What about real-world studies? So the CVD real basically showed that in comparison with other glucose-lowering drugs, usage of SGLT2 inhibitors basically had a low risk of all-cause death, myocardial infarction, heart failure, and stroke. Now, whichever you took, it was better. And again, this is real-world primary data. This is not secondary. And now Suresh, my friend, is going to say no to primary prevention. I only turn to my respected teachers. Romba koduma saradu. So what about GLP-1 receptor agonists? So again, it is important to look at RCTs first because this actually is the proof of the pudding. Now you have a lot of RCTs looking at various GLP-1 receptor agonists. Now Elixa was with Ixacinatide, Leader with Redoglutide, Sustain with Semaglutide, and you have the Harmony recently and the Rewind. And what's important is what I've highlighted prior cardiovascular disease as the baseline because you're looking at primary prevention. And the one which stands out is the Rewind trial, which actually looked at weekly ones dioglutide within a primary prevention population. And if you look at the population, 46% were women, the median follow-up was around five years, and the baseline A1C of 7.3. So this is basically your run-of-the-mill patients you get in clinic. So participants were similar to the sorts of the ambulatory patients you actually get in your clinic and you actually routinely see. And this basically is the only trial with primary data with GLP-1 receptor agonists, which is an RCT. So if you look at this, this was published in The Lancet quite recently. So as I mentioned, this had quite a significant number of people, 9,000 odd patients, followed for a period of five to six years, and with basically a, a low proportion of cardiovascular disease, only 31 percentage. And what was the outcome? The outcome said that actually if you use dulaglutide once a week, it basically reduced cardiovascular outcomes in both men and women with or without cardiovascular disease. So it was a very, very strong message. And if you look at the composite or whether it was independent you know, outcomes, this was much better in the arm which was using dulaglutide. So the rewind is proof of primary cardiovascular disease prevention with GLP-1 receptor agonists. What about real-world trials with GLP-1 receptor agonists? Now, this is a retrospective cohort study from Cleveland Clinic, and they basically looked at, it was a chart review, looking at people who basically were using GLP-1 receptor agonists, and they looked at the cardiac issues, looking at acute MI, stroke, and overall mortality. And what they showed, again, was something which was phenomenal. In the primary prevention arm, which I've highlighted, you can see whether it is independent components, whether it's acute myocardial infarction, CVA, or all-cause mortality, or a composite, this particular agent did very well in the primary prevention. So again, proof to say that you do have a very good protection. So I ask this question again, 
who has the best evidence for primary prevention? I've just showed you, this is actually with SGLT2, and now I'm showing it to you with GLP-1 receptor agonist. So I'm not sure what Suresh is going to have to say with all this evidence. And the most important aspect, now you don't listen to what I say, this is the 2019 ACC AHA guideline on the primary prevention of cardiovascular disease. And I read this, for adults with type 2 diabetes and additional ASCVD risk factors who require glucose-lowering therapy despite initial lifestyle modifications and metformin, it may be reasonable to initiate a sodium glucose transport inhibitor or a GLP-1 receptor agonist to improve glycemic control and reduce cardiovascular disease risk. So this is very vital. And this was an editorial by Subodh Verma and colleagues, which came out in The Lancet just a few weeks ago. And with the Diclatimi and the Rewind trials, the SGLT2 inhibitor class and the GLP-1 receptor agonists afford cardiovascular superiority even in primary prevention. And that's what I'd like to highlight. And as far as the SGLT2 inhibitors, more so for the heart failure, GLP-1 receptor agonists in preventing atherosclerotic cardiovascular events. So if we were to reduce the pump, pipes, and filter complications, he goes on to say, we will need to overcome clinical inertia and actually embrace these disease-modifying drugs, preferably also in combination. And actually, these particular trials make a strong case for this particular issue. Suresh, So I'm sure he's going to say controversies with the use of GLP-1. I, I mean, I do care, but I mean... Yes, he's going to say urinary tract infection, he's going to say DKA, he's going to say phonius gangrene, he's going to say cost, he's going to say all of this. But look at this. If you're looking at cost, I mean, is prevention better than cure? It is. So what about the cost of diabetes complications in India, if not intervened early? Think of a coronary artery bypass graft, think of an angiography, think of dialysis, de deranged quality of life. So where would we go with all this? What about special interest and other safety events? Now, yes, there are trials which looked at issues about you know, fractures, you know, look, look, issues of amputations. But I'd like to point out the longest trial in the primary prevention. That is basically the declared TIMI. And if you look at this, the fracture and the acute kidney injury, actually, the acute kidney injury, you can say, basically, in the DAP arm was actually much better. And the fractures were actually not increased. And as far as amputations and funius gangrene, too, this is the longest trial with SGLT inhibitors. Basically, this was not an issue. So I'm not really, you know... Um, I'm not sure where Suresh is going to come out and say that this is a particular important issue. So I, I'd like to say this. Suresh, you come to SGLT2 GLP1, you not to do anything So, GLP1 receptor agonists, SGLT2 inhibitors in primary cardiovascular disease prevention. We've got RCT evidence. We've got real-world evidence. We've got cardiac protection. We've got renal protection. We've got heart failure prevention, CVA protection, BP reduction, weight reduction, no hyperglycemia. Is this enough? Suresh? Need more? Right. So with that, I rest my case. Evidence is with GLP-1 receptor agonists and SGLT2 inhibitors. And I would definitely say game, set, and match to this particular uh, issue of you know, prevention. Clearly, primary cardiovascular disease prevention is a teamwork. It's just not about drugs. It's, it's, it's lifestyle modification. It's statins. It's blood pressure. It's everything. And also glycemia. And using the right appropriate agents. So teamwork is important. And power of working in a team, the power of teamwork, make the impossible possible as we are in Trendo 2019. Thank you very much for this opportunity. And I look forward to what Suresh has to say.